In a previous episode, we proved that almost every number goes below itself. The even numbers go down right away, half of the odd numbers go down after two steps, and within a short time, almost every number similarly goes below itself. That's because each start number up to 2 to the k has a unique initials up-down sequence. For a number to stay above itself, its sequence has to have at least 60% up moves. And as k gets large, a vanishing proportion of the numbers have that kind of a sequence. We didn't talk yet about how many numbers go all the way to 1. The 3n plus 1 conjecture says they all do. Maybe, maybe not. Could we at least show that almost all numbers go to 1? Here are some possibilities. All numbers go to 1. All numbers go to 1 with a finite number of exceptions. Maybe there's a loop out there. Almost all numbers go to 1. Half the numbers go to 1. Almost no numbers go to 1. Sure, we've tried a billion billion puny human-sized numbers and they all go to 1, but maybe they're the exceptions. Maybe numbers that go to 1 start to thin out after that and become exceedingly rare. It's possible. Here's a totally different conjecture, for example. All numbers have less than 20 digits. Well, you can try a billion billion numbers and they'll all satisfy the conjecture, but actually almost no number has less than 20 digits. Back to the 3n plus 1 conjecture though, come on, it can't be true that almost no numbers go to 1. So let's act like a census taker and start counting the numbers that go to 1. We might not get all of them, but maybe we can get most of them. We can start with every number of the form 2 to the n. They all go to 1. Now, powers of 2 thin out pretty quickly, so almost no numbers are powers of 2. Uh, so let's add some odd numbers. Numbers like 5, 21, and 85 hit a power of 2 in a single step, so they go to 1. We call these height 1 numbers. There are log x over 2 numbers of height 1. That's because every other power of 2 is reachable by some odd number by 3n plus 1. Uh, well, there's not too many height 1 numbers. How about height 2 numbers? Before we build a formula to estimate that, let's look at the empirical data for all numbers less than 1024. Across the bottom are different heights, and we can see that there are actually nine numbers of height 2. And here's how the rest of the numbers distribute by height. There are some height 41 numbers here, including the infamous number 27, which takes 41 steps to reach 1, ignoring evens. This graph is pretty unruly, so we're going to have a hard time taking a census in this neighborhood, but let's try anyway. We can extend our picture like this. We take any height 1 number and double it any number of times. Some of those doublings are reached by an odd height 2 number. Here we're building what people call the Collatz tree. There are two ways to reach a height 2 number. The first way goes 6 n minus 2 steps across the bottom, go up, then go 2m minus 1 steps across here. That results in some number y, and we know that y goes to 1. y times 3 plus 1 divided by 2 to the 2m minus 1 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2 to the 6n minus 2 equals 1. And if we solve for y, we get this. For every combination of n and m, we get a different height 2 number y. How many of those height 2 numbers are less than or equal to x? Well, let's rearrange some terms and simplify, get rid of the little minus 1 and plus 3, and we get 6n plus 2m is less than this. So how many combinations of integers n and m satisfy that? That is, how many paths through this tree wind up with some y that's less than x? It looks like it's going to be half this rectangle, or uh, this squared over 2 times 6 times 2. And if x equals 1024, we would predict that 7 paths will result in a y less than an x. The other way to reach a height 2 number is go 6n plus 2 steps across the bottom, go up, and then go 2m steps across here. Uh, there's two combinations of n m in this case that satisfy this. So in total, we predict that there should be 7 plus 2 equals 9 height 2 numbers less than 1024, which is correct. And now as x gets bigger, this log 9 stuff isn't going to matter too much. So to simplify, let's just uh, double the number of solutions for 6n plus 2m is less than or equal to log x. And uh, that gives us log squared x over 6 times 2 in general. And then to estimate the number of height 3 integers, we can count solutions for uh, this inequality. 
And now instead of half a rectangle, we've got one sixth of a cube, three factorial. So log cubed x over six times 18. And in general, we get log to the h of x over h factorial times three to the h minus one. And we can now sum this expression across h from one to infinity. And that'll give us the total number of integers that we know will go to one for sure. And it comes out to about square root of x. So that's pretty cool. And we can visualize uh, things for x equals 10, 24. Uh, the orange bars are again the same actual counts of actual numbers that go to one at various heights. And the blue bars show how many numbers are identified by the formula from before. So we catch a lot of numbers like three and five and 113, but it looks like most numbers still manage to avoid the census taker. And here's the same chart for x equals a million. So as x gets larger, of course, the square root of x approaches 0% of x. So even with this result, it can still be true that almost no numbers go to one, but I doubt it. Okay, hope you enjoyed this episode and see you next time.